Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Kentucky Small Business Development Center's weekly webinar. We're glad you're here. Um, as we allow attendees a few moments to join our event, we'd just like to share a, a bit of information about the Kentucky SVDC. As the only statewide nationally accredited program that provides entrepreneurial and business development services, the Kentucky SVDC plays a vital role in the Commonwealth's economic development by assisting entrepreneurs at every stage of their business cycle. So for almost 40 years now, the Kentucky SVDC has assisted emerging and growing businesses by providing the professional expertise, tools, and information necessary to make sound business decisions in a complex and ever-changing marketplace. Uh, we do this at no cost to our clients, thanks to the U.S. Small Business Administration, which is a co-sponsor of our program. The Univer University of Kentucky uh, then uh, administers the program in partnership with regional universities, community colleges, and local economic development agencies. We're part of a national network, actually, America's SBDC, which has over 1,000 centers across the nation and most of U.S. territories. You can uh, find out more about us at kybizhelp.com. There you'll find additional resources to help start, fund, and grow your business. To request, request personal assistance, you can go ahead and email us at info at kybizhelp.com or call us on our hotline at 888-475-7232. A recording of today's webinar will be emailed to you later this afternoon. So if you have trouble with any portion of the program or you just need to step away, know that you'll have access to the entire recording later on. So if you look to the right of your screen, you'll find our chat feature. Um, if you have any questions for our presenter, you can post them here and we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. I'm Janet Flaw. I'm with the Louisville Center, which is one of 12 centers across the Commonwealth. With me today, as always, are my colleagues with from the Louisville Center, Dave Etkin, our Center Director, and Tony Sears, our Assistant Center Director. So good afternoon, every guy, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Janet. Hi. Hi. It's a beautiful day today. Yeah. It's, uh, it's an even better day to learn about uh, some digital marketing, too, don't you think? It is. I'm so excited to uh, have our guest today because we've worked with her quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so we're very, very lucky, and, and I'll have to say, Carrie, uh, Introducing you, Kerry DeMuth, uh, with Rev Local. You have been such a great champion for uh, the SBDC over the years, and you've helped us out with uh, with a lot of information and, time, uh, and tons of events, and we really appreciate that. And um, I'm really happy that you, uh, once again, are here to share your expertise because you are uh, a highly sought after uh, marketing executive and expert, you know, especially in uh, uh, advertising and public relations and digital and social media. You've, you've had your own, um, um, marketing agency for many years, and um, I mean, everywhere I look, there you are, and uh, you're, you're quite the asset, and we're so thankful for having you here today. So, um, so with that, I'd like to learn a little bit about uh, what we can do as a small business owner to kind of really push our marketing going forward. Absolutely. So, Carrie? Let's see. Okay, so when we had our practice session before, I had the... Um, screen share now i'm on the chat and now i need to go back to there it is there, oh. I got you. <laughs> there we go <laughs> and let's see before we get started let me ask my team here so now slides i'm looking oh there we go thank you oh. <laughs> and i'm the digital person <laughs> well <laughs> i'm honored to be here uh good afternoon everyone and uh Today, it's, it's a really important time to take a hard look at your online presence, especially during um, COVID-19. So that's what I really wanna focus on today in the areas of Google, uh, online sales, and social media. So real quick, as Dave mentioned, my background, um, I worked in the television advertising industry for seven years, and then on the ad agency side for 20 years, and then, uh, a VP of marketing in corporate America for about five years before joining the team at Rev Local. Um, and the reason for that, ever since the internet came out in the 90s, I've had to be a student of digital to find the right digital partners for my ad agency clients. And then in corporate America, I worked with a bunch of different digital partners, uh, local, regional, national. And um, I've had uh, lots of experiences in the space. And when I uh, came to Rev Local, as a customer, 
I was so blown away by the company that I lobbied to go work for them. Um, so with that, just real quick, um, who we are, we're a national premier level partner for Google. So what that means, that's the top level of partnership. So we're on the front lines of really daily innovations that are going on in the digital space, especially with Google. Um, so we're here as, a, as an educator. Um, education's a big part of our mission because the digital space changes so rapidly. Um, so the, the core areas that we focus in on at RevLocal are local search and search engine optimization, review marketing, paid advertising, and social media. So enough about RevLocal. Let's, let's talk about how to take advantage of the digital space for your business. So what we're going to talk about today, uh, what's happening with the world we're living in, how it's affecting your business, and how you can take advantage of the digital space to further grow your business in this strange time that we find ourselves living in. So uh, quarantine has really changed our, our lifestyle. So think about this. Uh, before quarantine, many people would travel across town to go to work and they would plan their daily routines of things that they needed to take care of for their life purposes around their travel patterns. So think about that. If you, you know, would drive, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minute commute to work, you're probably going to have your favorite stops along the way, uh, errands that you need to run before work, after work, pickups, drop-offs. Hey, how about lunchtime? You got to run some errands. You know all the places of business near where you work in order to take care of your you know, daily needs. Well, now you're quarantined at home. You're working from home. How, how are you going to find places that you need to interact with close to home? Well, you're, you're going to look online. <laughs> you're going to be changing up the way that you live um, based on your new living environment. And let's make sure that your business is properly being represented. So as people are searching for new alternatives, you're the logical choice. So how do you do that? Well, first of all, again, we're seeing the highest level, highest usage of the internet in the history of the internet because of COVID-19 and quarantine. So let's, let's, really focus in on how you can take advantage of that increased traffic for your business. So this is kind of a fun little uh, tidbit about the traffic changes. I'm sure you've experienced this too. Um, increase in Facebook usage, Netflix, Netflix usage, YouTube usage. Hey, I, I'm new to Netflix <laughs> and I love it. So I'm definitely one of those statistics. Okay. So how do we enhance your online presence? So the first step is local search and Google. So let's talk about that. For years and years and years, the thinking was, hey, I'm just going to put a website out there online and people will come knocking on my door. Well, it's a little more complicated than that in, in this day and age. You really need a digital marketing strategy to drive traffic to your website. And a lot of businesses, believe it or not, still don't even have a web presence, don't even have a website. Uh, so again, having an online presence is so important in this day, in, this day in the, in, that we live in. So think, think back about, oh, uh, turn of the century or even before that, uh, when the railroad industry first got started. Hey, if those railroad tracks didn't come through your town, you shriveled up and died. And in a way, it's kind of like that with your online presence. If people can't find your business online, it's like you don't exist. So let's make sure you're being found. So believe it or not, 3.5 billion searches happen on Google daily. How crazy is that? Google is the largest search engine. It's the elephant in the room. You got to pay attention. You got to be a part of that game uh, in order to be found. So here's a fun, fun question for you. Let's use the chat. Who do you think is 
the second largest search engine. So if you want to go to the chat and just type in who you think the second largest search engine is. Let's take a look. You Oh, well, Janet, you're on it. That's right. YouTube is the second largest search engine. And guess what? Google owns YouTube. Yeah. So you definitely need to pay attention to that. And we got some other ones in here. Bing. Uh, uh, let's see what else, else people are putting in there. Oh, someone made a note. YouTube is not officially a search engine. Well, Nicole, good point. But people are using it as a search engine. People search YouTube for information, for entertainment, uh, and they're learning about businesses that they want to do business with through YouTube. And believe it or not, Facebook is trying to play in that space too. And to be, people are searching in Facebook for products and services that they're looking for. So it's kind of interesting. Okay, so moving back, let's go over here. Okay. So let's talk about the anatomy of search. So for years and years and years, search was made up of paid ads at top and then organic search, where it was just a bunch of list of websites. So about 10 years ago, Google completely changed the playing field and created this big chunk of real estate right there smack in the middle of search called local search, the map and the push pins. Now, this was a game changer because in the past, you would look at organic search engine optimization or search engine optimization as basically how you built out your website. Did you have the right meta tags, descriptors, keywords in your website? And were you adding content on a regular basis that were key, keyword rich content? And that still has some relevance today, but it's not the be all end all that it used to be because Local search is a totally different or is a totally different algorithm to be found in local search. Um, and the old ways of SEO is just a small piece of that puzzle. Uh, there's a, there are more areas of concern for the local search algorithm that people aren't aware of. So let's talk back here at um, paid ads at the top. So just for fun, let's go back to the chat and put in there yes or no if you click on paid ads. Do you click on paid ads, yes or no? Let's see what we got going here. Yes or no, do you click on paid ads? Well, yes, yes, no, yes, no, 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 no. So what's interesting, the paid ads at the top are pay per click. So you can have your ads up there, but you only get charged when people actually click on them. We also refer to it as PPC, pay per click. So the reason that Google makes so much money is because people do click on paid ads. <laughs> That's how Google gets paid. Uh, so we like to look at local search, um, well, search uh, marketing as a total, we like to look at it as the Monopoly board. So when you were a kid and you played Monopoly, the goal was the more real estate you owned, the more rent you got to collect, and therefore the more money you made. So it's kind of the same concept in search. The more real estate in search that you can cover the better your results are uh, for people doing business with you. So um, if you're able to be found in the top of search with paid ads and then a premium position in the top three selection in local search, and then possibly uh, close up in organic search, which is below local search, then you've won the monopoly game. Um, so, so back on organic search results that are now below local search, statistics show that 80% of people never go below local search. And the reason for that, it goes back to why 
Google created local search in the first in the first place because uh, the majority of searches, the data, it's all about the data, showed that the majority of searchers had a local intent to buy for what they were searching for. And so that's what caused Google to create this local search section. Um, and then, of course, the other search engines have followed suit. So you have a similar local search area in Bing and Yahoo, um, that, that type of thing. So how do you play in the local search section? That's what we really want to focus on here. Um, we'll go over to the next slide. Well, let's we'll see here. Okay, so it starts with your Google listing. So this is an example of an unclaimed listing where it doesn't have any information. It says add missing information. So Google is constantly sending web crawlers all over the internet looking for information. And Google actually creates these Google listings on your behalf. And then it's up to you as the business owner to actually go out and claim the Google listing and manage it. Um, so let's just have some fun uh, in the chat. Is there anyone out there that has not either claimed or created their Google listing? Anyone? Oh, let's see here. So I'm going to assume that everyone has claimed their Google listing. Yes? Oh, nope, we got someone that has not. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's see. Oh, you just verified yours today, Kimberly. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so how do you claim your Google listing? All right, let's talk about that. So your listing is claimed, once, once you claim it, you have control over what the information is and your search ranking goes up with activity that you do on this Google listing. So, so the big thing, the only way to be found in local search, it starts, Oh, are you there? Yeah, oh, I think we lost the first time. Let me, um, I was trying to reconnect. I guess um, that was just really weird. Okay, sorry, technical difficulties. Way to go. Oh, that happens. Okay, <laughs> so sorry. Okay, so um, yes, the first step to be found in local search is having a Google listing. And so in order to have a Google listing, you got to have a Gmail account. So you probably don't have a Gmail account, uh, but that's okay. You don't have to make it your end all be all. It's just, it's just a, an account in order to establish a Google listing. Uh, let me come over here. So once you uh, verify your Google listing and start managing it, you can actually change that contact information to your, whatever your domain name, email address is. Um, but just always know that it's set up through a Gmail account. Uh, so Google actually, I know this is interesting, but to verify your account, Google will actually send out a postcard, a direct mail piece. I know it's funny, technology company using direct mail. Um, but it's all based on location and making sure that you're verifying that your business is at a legitimate location, place of business. Okay, so some of the business owners out there are probably saying, well, Carrie, I work from my home or um, I don't want to publicize, publicize my work address or I don't have a physical location. That's okay. Um, you do have to set up the listing tied to a physical location. It can be your home address, but then 
once you manage your listing, you can hide that address and set up what's called a service area where you just put in the areas of town that you do business in, and then it'll draw uh, a, a map, um, a, a radius or circumference of where you do business. So what's really important about this Google listing is communicating to your customer base important information, having the correct name of your business, your phone number, your address, your hours, your website, uh, different categories of business. And the way that you set that up is you go to that business.google.com uh, web address and just follow the prompts through. So this uh, Google listing is constantly being innovated by Google. They're all about updates and innovations and new bells and whistles. And the way to play the Google game is to stay on top of all those innovations because they're not innovating just for the heck of it. Um, and those who stay on top of Google innovations get rewarded for that. So when you're able to constantly take advantage of all the new features that continuously come out on this Google listing, you get elevated in search for that, showing that continuous engagement um, is really important in the digital space. So what are some of the helpful GMB features? We refer to the Google My Business page as your GMB. And uh, let's see here. Um, so let's talk about some of those key things, especially in this uh, world we're living in today with COVID. So 30% of customers say they're more likely to choose a business that actively replies to reviews. A big part of local search is review marketing. Today's word of mouth advertising is the form of online reviews and every business needs to have a review marketing strategy. So best practices for review marketing are to always respond to every single review, good and bad. And um, uh, what's interesting too, businesses will say, well, gosh, how, how do I get people to give me a, a review? Well, statistics show that 70% of people will leave you a review if you ask them to and you make it super easy for them to do that. And one of the best practices, ways to ask for reviews is to ask for feedback. You know, thank people for doing business with you and then ask them for your feedback, for their feedback. And you can make it easy for them by uh, sending, sending that information in an email with a link to your Google listing. Um, so... The content of reviews actually resonates in local search. One of the missions of the local search algorithm is to serve up the most relevant responses for what people are searching for. And when you have a, when, when someone leaves you um, a review that has specific information in it, it can resonate in local search. And I'll give you an example of that. Uh, being from Kentucky, I love Claudia Sanders restaurant out there in um, uh, Shelbyville. They're one of our clients at Rev Local and they do some catering and they hosted their first ever uh, Sweet 16 Quinceanera party. And the family was so appreciative of, of how wonderful the event was. They wrote, you know, a huge glowing review on their Google listing with details about the Quinceanera event and how it was the best one ever and blah, 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 blah. And the next thing you know, Claudia Sanders got four or five requests immediately for booking Quinceanera parties that led to like over $25,000 in new revenue that they would never have gotten without that customer review, that raving customer review. Um, so building that loyalty, um, is really important. And in the local search algorithm, a large percentage of the algorithm is based on Google reviews. How many you got, how recent are they, and what the average quality score is. So if you haven't had a Google review in say a year or more, uh, Google thinks you went out of business and will actually um, uh, uh, not, not choose to ser serve you up because they don't think that you're relevant. Um, so this is a key thing, a, a review marketing strategy, have maybe one to two Google reviews a month is a starting point, is a really good place, place to be. Let's see here. 
So back on key areas of the Google listing, specifically for COVID, let's think about that. This is a quick reference point to show how you're doing business in the new environment of quarantine. Uh, so you might want to show that you have curbside pickup or you have delivery or you have online ordering, um, free shipping, uh, in-store pickup. Those types of attributes are relatively new category of attributes in your Google listing. So if you haven't looked at your Google listing in a while and you want to take make use of these new attributes, I highly encourage you to go to the dashboard and um, add those to your listing. Let's see here. Um, let me go in here. Okay. So let's see. So a relatively new feature in the Google listing is called a Google post. This is like Facebook for business where you can uh, promote different uh, types of posts. So at the top here, you can see, let me put my cursor up here. You can do updates, you can do add events, you can do add an offer. So there are specific types of posts that you can do. The normal um, add updates and add offers are typically seven day where they're live on your Google listing for seven days and then they archive, archive into that folder. Uh, but the event one, you can actually set a date range um, where that would stay live uh, up until the end of the event. So up to 30 days um, on that date range option. And then of course, whatever option you build out on these posts, it will give you options for a call to action that you can select different options for call to actions on these posts. And, you know, a good, a good strategy would be to have at least one Google post a month, just to show that engagement with your Google listing. Okay, retail to go. This is a whole new way of thinking, especially for retailers with quarantine. You know, what's, what are some new opportunities for me to do business with my client base that you know may be afraid to come into my store. So you can show if you have in-store shopping or if you have curbside pickup or you can have uh, online uh, promotions and then people call and select items by phone and then come pick it up. Um, and how, however you want to manage the new way of doing business is is really important in this day and age. And again, virtual shopping, um, taking advantage of your online channels. And this is where we start getting into uh, social media um, that can drive virtual shopping. So when we were talking before about paid ads at the top of search, we like to think of that strategy as meeting the demand. People know what they're looking for and they're searching for categorical or products or services. And they know that they, they need that service. Um, and so they're, they're meeting, so your paid ads in the top of search are meeting that demand. But there's a whole nother element of creating the demand where people don't necessarily know that they, need that new uh, lantern that also is a bug zapper. And then all of a sudden it shows up in their social media feed and they're like, wow, that's the coolest thing ever. Click on it and buy it. Um, so <laughs> think of virtual shopping through social media channels as creating the demand for what you have to offer. Uh, and then being able to drive customers either to your online store or your physical store uh, through that process. Let's see. So e-commerce and social media, adjusting your business's messaging on social media. Um, I'm not sure that everyone in the audience has an e-commerce site, uh, but if you do, it's a really great opportunity in this day and age to be promoting that through social media, driving traffic to your e-commerce site through social media. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Um, this is a great statistic. E-commerce retailers are seeing 175 
$1.5 billion increase in revenue due to quarantine. So now's the time to take advantage of all those captured eyeballs that are shopping online. And a big way to do that, again, is through social media, driving traffic back to your online store. Um, the best sites for e-commerce marketing are Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, believe it or not. And let's see. Okay. So 80.4% of social traffic to e-commerce websites comes from Facebook. I know it's, it's hard to believe, but uh, that's really where you want to do some targeting for e-commerce type websites. So how do you do that? So a couple options. Uh, you can boost posts. That's, I'm sure you've experienced that where you post something on Facebook and Facebook immediately wants you to spend some money with them and boost that post. Um, a rule of thumb for boosting posts, you wanna really uh, take a hard look at posts that are having good engagement. So you wanna boost the posts that are most popular, that are actually getting a lot of likes or shares or comments. Those are the posts you wanna boost. Um, generating reviews in Facebook is also really important and then engaging with your customers. So when, when you post on social media and people respond, they comment on your post, you wanna like their comment or um, add more. If, if they're asking a question, you definitely wanna respond and answer the question. Um, and then of course you can always run targeted ads in Facebook. So one of the things that we like to talk about at Rev Local is back on that local search algorithm, on Google, a part of the algorithm is based on consistent posting in social media. And people don't realize that. Um, as a business owner, you've taken the time to build out a Facebook page and then you forget about it and you don't post on your Facebook page for you know a couple months and then you post and then you forget about it again. Uh, you really need to build a content strategy for Facebook or any of the social media platforms, you really need to be posting multiple times a week in order to help elevate your position in local search. So we like to talk about a minimum of 13 posts a month. That's on average three to four posts a week, and that helps elevate you in local search. So when it comes to um, targeted paid ads in Facebook, there's a whole bunch of different options of types of ads that you can run. And if you need leads generated yesterday, uh, a lead generation format of uh, targeted Facebook uh, or Instagram paid ads are really a um, successful way to go about that. Let's see here. And so of course, Instagram owned by face Facebook is a really great visual opportunity for pushing people to your online retail and again, um, being able to engage with your audiences and build your audiences in Instagram uh, helps, again, with your brand awareness. Um, you can share specials, you can build relationships, you can also run ads in Instagram. Um, it's, a, it's another uh, really effective tool um, where people, people are looking these days for um, information. And let's see. And then again, in YouTube, we're seeing a um, huge increase in YouTube for entertainment and other streaming sites. Um, and a lot of businesses are reallocating their TV budgets for other ad options in the digital space. So as a business owner, we really encourage you to create a YouTube channel. I'm sure you have some um, how-to or instructional uh, type of information that this is a great platform to do that where you can actually demonstrate um, how your product or service works. Um, engaging in the comment section on your YouTube channel is really great. And then of course, you can always run ads in YouTube. Um, back on um, uh, the YouTube area, um, 
being able to take advantage of what's popular um, in the in the video world. Uh, videos really help engage that video engagement really helps elevate you in local search as well. So at Rev Local, again, we're all about education and we do a weekly trends and digital blog that's really helpful information for business owners out there. Uh, you can sign up for our blog. Um, you can actually on our website, we have a library tab where you can see all of our archive blogs. And then we have a really great search query too, where you can search a topic and find information about it. Yeah. So I know it's been a lot of information in a short amount of time, but I always like to leave plenty of time for question and answers that uh, you can uh, go into the chat and put in a specific area of interest or something, an issue that you're having with your digital marketing, um, any kind of uh, question on any of the platforms, anything that I could be of, of help with. Um, I, as David said earlier, I do um, speak to groups. Um, I'm available for any business association, chamber of commerce. Uh, if you want to contact me um, offline and schedule time for me to speak to any groups, I'm happy to do that. And my contact information is here. Uh, let's see. Do we have any any questions? So um, here's a question, um, mm -hmm. Gary. So you mentioned about um, – you know, just, um, asking your uh, customers to review on Google, should you uh, also ask them to review on other platforms? Or, or if that's true, what um, what kind of strategy would you use to kind of spread the reviews around and, and some of those other platforms that you find helpful? Yeah. So it's interesting. There's different industry platforms that make sense for specific types of industries for reviews. So in addition to Google, for instance, in the home services area, uh, people take a look a lot at those um, home advisor reviews or house reviews, uh, those types of Angie's List reviews. Um, in the restaurant world, it's more of the Yelp review area. Uh, of course, Facebook reviews are, are really important. And then in the medical area, the different medical platforms, uh, WebMD, uh, those types of uh, health um, type uh databases that offer review marketing. Those are, those are important too. But the, the main one to focus on is Google reviews because it resonates in your local search um, uh, algorithm. So I see a, a question here from Janet. Carrie, you mentioned the large percentage of traffic coming from Facebook to e-commerce sites. Does, the, does that change depending on demographic you are trying to reach? Well, that's a good uh, question. So overall, we're seeing, you know, these large increases in traffic. And then you can break it down into uh, the, the target demographics that you're looking to reach on Facebook. And you can see uh, what the potential is when you break it down that way. And of course, you want to look at geographic um, targeting as well, because you may not service beyond a certain point. Um, uh, or if you are a national company, then you want to focus on a national geographic. So uh, it really depends on um, the, the type of industry and what your goals and objectives are. And then here's a question from JG Rogers. Is video content better than photo content alone? Um, believe it or not, it's more engaging. Video is more engaging. So yes, you would probably have better conversions with video, but, but uh, still photos is still important. You know, the old adage of a picture speaks a thousand words is still relevant. Um, actually using uh, photos um, before text is, is really good. So so, yes, you get some engagement with text posts, you get more engagement with photo posts, and you get even more engagement with video posts. So here's a question for you, uh, Carrie. Um, 
you mentioned about um, you know posting on Facebook and, and maybe a YouTube channel, um, and I, it's sometimes easy just to say to do that. I think it's harder to kind of come up with a coherent strategy and a coordination between the different channels that you're trying to, to push things out of. You know, what are some tips that someone would um, kind of think through or do at the very beginning before they even started posting things to make sure that um, they kind of know what they're, they're talking about and the information and resources they need, that, that sort of thing. What, what's the very basic, uh, basic starting point? In social media? Yeah, and you know, like in, in uh, joining up the content strategy between uh, coordinating it between like uh, Facebook and YouTube. I, I mean, you, you would want them to be uh, kind of coordinated, not just kind of random random posts, correct? Sure. So you can build out content marketing calendars for yourself of um, seasonality basis. You know, some different things happen in your business, your industry during different seasons of the year and creating content that takes advantage of those different times of years, different time of the year um, is, is really helpful. Um, but back on coordinating the efforts, um, you know, it's, it's, it's perfectly fine to run your same content across all the social media platforms, but you need to version the format uh, per platform because each platform has a has a different nuance to um, sizing and uh, that type of thing. Um, so it just it just depends. Um, but yeah, some of the things in content generation for social media, you want to tell the story of your business in different ways, and it can be uh, through a lot of different avenues. You could focus on a uh, an employee spotlight. You can uh, put in customer testimonials in your um, social media posts. You can highlight a certain product or service. You can um, do educational type information about your industry as a whole, uh, seasonality information. There's just a whole gamut of um, helpful information that you can put out there. Excellent, thank you. Tony, do you have a question you'd like to ask? Sure. Um, I've got a question here from Evelyn Knight, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Evelyn wants to know, she's wondering about marketing for services, and that sounds like her service is coaching. Mm -hmm. So do you have any tips for that? Absolutely. So, you know, a lot of times when you think about the digital space, you think about business to consumer. Well, it's just as relevant for business to business, B2B. And, uh, you know, Google has trained us all to... Google that <laughs> when you're looking for something, you just Google that. And so now, especially is the time for B2B type businesses, coaching services or consulting service companies, any kind of, of uh, service oriented business really needs to properly build out their digital footprint online and be found in local search because business owners are looking for your services. And if you're not showing up, then you know, it's like you don't exist. Um, so, yeah, I highly recommend, you know, starting with that Google listing and then building up some Google reviews and uh, posting in social media. Um, we also talk about building citations in local search. There's, oh gosh, you know, 70, 80, 90, 100 uh, listing directories that validate your business to Google. And when you Google your own business name, like on a laptop, you'll see your Google listing to the right, but then you'll see a whole bunch of other information about your business on the left. And spend some time and go through those. Um, if your business has changed its name in the past three or four years or changed locations, there's a whole digital footprint out there of your old data that needs to be cleaned up and managed. Um, and that conflicting data confuses the search engines. And so they don't know which is the correct information and actually negate you in search. So so really um, looking at building some citations and your digital footprint um, is a big part of local search as well. Thank, thank you. Um, I have another question for you, um, Carrie. It comes from JJ Rogers. He um, JJ says, it seems that Facebook will only let me target within 50 miles of my location. Is there a way to extend this farther? 
So that's probably through a boosted post. Um, so when you go to the next level of targeted paid ads, you have more flexibility um, with what you're doing and could get more granular or uh, larger op options than just boosting a post. Okay, um, and have another question here from Sam Willocks. Um, he says, "How do we get our restaurant to show up on the Google pin? You have to really zoom in to find us. And what's this based on?" <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, that's one of the things that we see a lot with um, folks that we work with. Uh, there are times when um, the Google pin either doesn't show up or it's in the wrong location and you have to move it and manage it. Um, so I'll give you an example. Uh, I recently started working with a new business here in Louisville that Google decided that their location was about a block away from where they were <laughs> and they could not get that Google pin moved to save their life. And again, being a premier level partner with Google, we were able to move that pin to the right location but we have to manage that because it will revert back. And so we kind of play a game of whack-a-mole where we're constantly making sure that it stays put where it is. Um, so that, that could be uh, an issue, but typically the Google pin is based on a physical address. And it may be a situation where your physical address for the business is one building, but you really want to have people come to this other building. Uh, and so then that's a situation where you have to move the push pin to the other building. Um, and that's something that we can help with. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a question for you, Carrie. Mm -hmm. um, someone someone uh, <clears throat> asked if you're, if you're just starting out, where would you, um, prefer to invest money first, pay-per-click or Facebook ads? So again, it boils down to, do you need leads yesterday? <laughs> or are you um, wanting to build awareness for the future? Um, so, and thinking through your business model, are you needing to meet the demand where people, you know people are looking for your products or services and you want them to find you immediately in local search? Or are you needing to create demand where people don't even know about you, wouldn't even know how to search for you? Mm -hmm. um, and then being able to, to um, create that demand through uh, targeted ads and Facebook, Instagram. So it just depends on what the strategy is. All right. Let's see. Any other questions you have, Tony? Or? Actually, I have one um, for myself. So when you were talking about the Google post, Carrie, and mm -hmm. you said to do at least one a month so that that can show the interaction with your Google listing. Correct. Is there, um, and please forgive my ignorance of this, but is there a fee attached with the posting no, or is it something? No, okay. Your Google yeah. listing's free and all the activity that you do on the Google listing is no charge. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And for businesses that don't have a website, don't even have an online presence, once you claim and verify your Google listing and you have access to the dashboard where you can build out that Google listing, there is a button for a website where you can create a free website through your Google listing. Now it's not anything fancy. It's, it's basically a splash page. Um, but for those that, you know, maybe not don't have a budget for a website, you can take advantage of that feature and, um, uh, and create your own. Oh, okay. Thank you. I think I read somewhere where uh, it's like 60 to 70% of the small businesses in Kentucky do not have a website. So. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. Well, I think that's all the questions we have today. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of wrap up a little early today, if that's okay with you, Carrie, unless yeah. you have anything else you want to add with us. Uh, no. there. Awesome. Well, I, uh, I can't thank you enough for coming today. This was, uh, this was really great, especially uh, about the, the Google listings and uh, some of these other things we talked about today. I think this is great information and, um, uh, everybody out there, please feel free to reach out to Carrie. She's here as a resource for you, so please do so. And 
We're glad there you were here, and thanks. And hopefully, you'll come back again. I'm hoping you'll always do. Oh, thank we, you. We have one more, David. We have one more question. Sorry. Okay. Um, would a Google Google website conflict with your own website? That was the question they had. Oh yeah. So if you have a website, you don't need to use that free Google website button, but you do need a Google listing because that's your, the Google listing is, is really the front, front page to your website. And you can attach your website to the Google listing. Um, so the reason that Google again has that local listing, they're wanting to, uh, make it super easy for a business for people to do business with your business and so taking advantage of that google presence um, is is really a game changer and on that once you have access to that dashboard there's insights on the back side of uh you can over time you'll be able to see the um, activity that uh, that's going on with your google listing it'll track uh people that have clicked from your Google listing to your website, it'll track clicks to directions and clicks to call. Uh, but what's really interesting over time, it'll start building out the top 10 keywords that you're being found for. And this is a good story. So I was um, meeting with a um, audiologist here in Louisville uh, and they'd claim their Google listing and then they, they were engaging with it quite a bit and they had a website and they had social media and they, they brought it to my attention. They showed me their dashboard on their Google listing, the insights, the analytics. And they said, Hey, how come our top 10 keywords that we're being found for are coffee, coffee bar, uh, coffee lounge, uh, free coffee. Uh, what's that all about? And I said, well, let me show you. <laughs> so on your about section on your Google listing, you really play up this free coffee bar lounge that you have in your lobby and how homey it is. And then you play it up on your website, you play it up in your social media. And lo and behold, your Google reviews, the majority of them are talking about your free coffee. <laughs> so content is really important to pay attention to that your uh, marketing the products and services that you have to offer and if you have other amenities that's great but don't make that the be all end all yeah yeah nice <laughs> well thank, thank you. you well thank you for answering that last minute question and I thought you should know you're getting a lot of accolades over here Bessie okay. Salisbury says thank you Carrie very helpful information so um, and then I see here that Jill Moran, oh, Jill, I'll just say Jill. She says very helpful and she took a lot of notes and she says, thank you. Oh, yeah. wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Carrie. We'll, uh, we're gonna have you back again real soon. Cool. Thank you, Carrie, it's so great to see you again. <laughs> well, everyone stay healthy out there. All right, we'll see you soon, Janet and Tony. Bye, thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good afternoon, everybody.